Welcome back to Total Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Paul. Our special guest this week is Cassidy Michelle. She is a very successful model, and she is now transitioning into doing pageants. We brought her on the show to talk about all of her successes in the fashion world and her upcoming pageant competition this coming October. So stay tuned. And welcome to the show. Hi. Well, we, we really appreciate you coming on the show. I I. I haven't honestly had a 100% true bred model on the show, so I really am um, very happy to have someone of your caliber to to come on the show and and really talk to our guests and our and all of our amazing um, subscribers about what it takes to be a model. So you were telling me that you were thinking about being a model as young as six years old or seven? I was seven years old. Okay. My mom and I, we used to scrapbook when I was younger. And every photograph she took of me, I was just striking a pose everywhere I went. And I've always been such a little diva growing up, you could say. And I still am as I'm growing up. But as soon as I could pick up a pencil, I was starting to apply makeup and playing dress up with high heels. I've always known... I wanted to be in the fashion industry and to be a model one day. So growing up, my parents always had a camera in their hand, taking pictures of like childhood memories and every photo. I'm just, hey, look at me. I'm striking a pose. Look at me. While like everyone else is doing their own thing, but I'm just posing, trying to model at seven years old. Now, if if you're sitting there as a young lady and you don't have that true desire as a young child, do you think that it's going to be hard for you to build that or you were just blessed that you had that at a young age? I am definitely very blessed. Everyone in my family says I have a true, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a blessing. A blessing. Uh, I have a blessing okay. within me that I'm able to do what I'm doing today. But it's definitely does give me a huge advantage growing up. I've always known what I wanted to do. But these other young girls and teens who want to become models but they don't know where to start it's a little difficult for them because they don't they don't know who to reach out to or how to get to that spot to just be a model so how did you get to that point how did you get the point from being a seven-year-old to um doing your first photo shoot so what was that what was that bridge like so how did you get to that point tell tell our, our listeners like how how did you get there that Maybe that would help to fill in that gap. Okay. So I definitely, growing up, school has always been number one priority. Growing up, you had education came first before you were able to go play on the farm with all my cousins or go hang out with my friends in school or outside of school. So I didn't have my first opportunity to really model until the day I graduated from high school in 2016. And that's when Route One Apparel, they needed a model. And I was like, hey, I can do it. And they brought me along to the photo shoot. I wasn't signed with them at the time. I didn't have a contract or anything like that. So that was my first ever photo shoot that I ever did and was able to model clothing for them. The bridge to get me there, I definitely had a lot of obstacles I had to go through with school because I was bullied. I didn't have the right hair, my makeup, or having really bad acne, glasses, braces. Children are very brutal and so so in high school and and elementary you were one of the kids that got picked on yes i was okay i was that girl so guys and girls this is like a beautiful stunningly amazing person i'm sitting in front of so it doesn't matter who you are you can be bullied even if you're the cutest person in the room or the one that people you know, are so jealous of. So I guess it comes in any form. So maybe they, they saw something in that they were jealous of, even at that point. Because I, I doubt, you know, I doubt you were the ugly one, okay? I'm sh- well, this is, gonna, this is something for everyone to laugh about because I'm so proud of it now, and it makes me laugh. I would walk into the lunchroom, and everyone, there's this one particular person, and it used to tear me down and make me cry, I knew I was stronger and better than that. And I could not let someone's words divine who I was. And they said, she's so tiny, she can hula hoop through a cheerio. And I was like, yes, I am a very small girl. I'm very petite. But those words hurt me 
when I was only in the sixth grade. But as I got older each school year going to my senior year, it shaped me into who I was and who I am today because you don't let other people's words define who you are. You always have to be true and humble on the inside. It's not about who you are on the outside and what you look like. If you have a good heart, that's all that truly matters. I mean, I, I agree with you, but a lot of people will take that kindness and like strip it down. So I'm happy. I'm happy you still have that. I hope that as you get older that you're able to keep that with you because sometimes people lose track of that, that goal of like, you know, you need to have, stay humble. Yep. That's one of my sayings I say all the time. Cause I travel to New York city to LA all the way on the West coast. And there's so many different kinds of people you meet along the way, but I will never forget where I came from living on the family farm. My family has shaped me into the person I am today for being so humble. Never forget where you come from. Always come back home to the Lacey family farm. Do you recommend that seven-year-old to graduation taking a certain course or or focusing on a certain type of education? Or um, are you just saying you need to try and take as many personal photos as possible? Like like what what really helped you that you finally were ready to to um, to work with Route One Apparel and do that first photo shoot. So, my biggest advice is definitely take photos all the time. Always camera, camera with you. Take selfies. Figure out what lighting looks best for you. What angle is your best shot? Always take photos. Have people take pictures of you. But also, I would rec- strongly recommend going to like runway classes and management training like do all these training and classes that they provide for you at a young age because the sooner you learn it the more you can take advantage of it and use it soon as you're in like your early 20s like me instead of I didn't start until I was like 18 years old so I felt like I had a little late start but truthfully I was blessed and I just kept going with the flow it's like sports in my family if you give us a bat and a ball we're going to pick it up just like that. So it's, I kind of picked up modeling the same way. So how did that first photo shoot go? Did you, did they actually use you? Or were you just? It was incredible. My photo is still up on Route 1, Route 1 Apparel's page on their website from the very first photo shoot I had with them in 2016. The photo that's on their website is from like my collarbones to like my waist and is just showing off the Maryland crab with the football in the middle of it. And it's so, it makes me so happy to see I wasn't even signed with them at the time. And now looking at the connections that I've made with, they're my family now. We we're all so connected and so strong, cheering for each other, always hoping for the best. And when we come together for a photo shoot, it's like dream work. That's the best scenario for your first photo shoot that you're, that you're still working with those people um, in any situation. Um, would you suggest for a first photo shoot to work, to try and work with a clothing line or or now with your experience you have, would you recommend doing it with um, a well-known photographer? Like what do you think would be the best route? Because it sounds like you had a bet a great success, but that might not be something like not everyone. It might not work for everyone else. Yeah, right. you're absolutely correct. I definitely think working with as many photographers as you can in the area where you come from, people who want to just start photography, help them out because they will help you along the way. And also, I am signed with Route 1, and then I work with a clothing boutique up in Alexandria, Virginia, going to New York, L.A., working with celebrities and top designers in Mexico and Dominican Republic, it's not all about who you work with. It's all about just getting those first few photos taken. You have to invest in yourself before you see it, if that makes sense. Like you have to build up a portfolio first because you can't just go into a clothing company or a boutique or a local store or anywhere you want to have your photos published that and say hey can I go ahead and 
take some photos and we'll put them up on the wall on a poster. You have to show a portfolio like, hey, this I can do lifestyle, I can do bikini, I can do beauty, commercial, print. You have to show them what you're capable of before you just walk right into it and say, hey, can we work together? No, I. that's exactly as a photographer that I try to promote to my clients that want to get signed with the agency that you need to have a large variety of photos. Yep. And you need to do like a trial and error. You're like if bikini doesn't work for you, then don't focus on bikini. You know, maybe Correct. life maybe lifestyle is better for you. So have you found your niche that's really your your go to that you would prefer to work only? A hundred percent. I love doing beauty work, print and I'm high fashion. So that's like New York runways and things like that. Well, as you get older, is that something that you can stay in that category? Because age-wise, is is that more predominantly a younger market? Like No, uh, not at all. So back in the day, I'm talking about like 80s and 90s. You had to be six foot, size double zero, no curves, nothing. Well, nowadays, it's getting a little bit more lenient where you can be a short model. Like, I'm the shortest model at every one runway show I've ever done. I'm only 5'6", and my good friend, she's 6'2", flat foot, and she is killing all these runways in New York. But if you have that unique and different look, they're going to bring you on no matter what. So they're not so picky about your size or your height anymore. It's just you have to be unique and stand out. Well, the one um, industry that is really shocking me, and I'm really happy to see them breaking the mold, is the Sports Illustrated magazine that they do every year because they've decided not to do the same category of, of young ladies anymore. There's a much wider variety of, and I think that's why that magazine is still very successful to this day. I think so as well. And I think it's awesome how these like Sports Illustrated and like agencies and mother agencies and everyone out there, they're opening up. It's not a closed little bubble anymore. It's giving everyone else a chance who wants to pursue their dreams, like mine, myself. I mean, like you were saying, in the past, you would be discluded, but you're simply gorgeous. And so you would be you would be thrown out just based on your height, but you have no, you don't have no weight issues. You have no skin issues, you know? So to be more uh, inclusive puts you in that category too. Cause for some reason they would throw you out too. Oh yeah. If I wasn't six foot back in the day, they would definitely kick me out. And you're more than capable as you've proven to, to, to sell their outfits. So I do understand the concept that, if you if you're a dress designer, you want to see the outfit flow and long, but you could also cut it a little shorter and and do the same thing. There has to be a middle ground because you know there are much more people that are five five than there are six one that are women. I yes. mean, and, and I don't understand why it's taking over fifty plus years for designers to finally like really come to oh well maybe we need to. I don't know if it's because we have the internet now and every time they do a runway show, they can literally bootleg everything they make within 24 hours. So It's or- incredible. One of my dear friends out in L.A., I, was, I stayed with her because I walked in her show 2017 of last year. And her and the other designer, I stayed with them, and they were up all night. They pulled an all-nighter making last-minute adjustments and doing – everything for these outfits to make them perfect and within the past 19 months she has grown so much and has so much success and these designers I give it all to them because they work hard for these outfits that they're making and designing on their own yeah well well yeah and they deserve every single dime they get for them too you know I mean if, if if the outfit is retailed for 150 dollars there's probably another $150 worth of work, you know, $300 worth of work that went into. Oh, most definitely. So, you know, the prices are high, but, you know, there is quality built into it, you know. 
That's correct. I mean, there was there that's there is a reason why when you go to Walmart and the shirt's ten dollars because maybe it's not double sim seamed or maybe the material is not soft. Maybe it wasn't you know hemmed right. So there is a reason why quality that's built into that material. For sure. So for the last couple of years, you're modeling. So what what are some pitfalls? Have you run into anything that you're really overwhelmingly? I I know you, you believe in a no drama, um, but there's got to be some things you've learned that you definitely want to tell young ladies or young guys that want to The only model. advice I really have for the people who are looking to expand and grow in their modeling career is do your research. I didn't have a hand to hold growing up saying, oh, don't do that. Don't sign that piece of paper. Don't do that. You have to, for you to know what red flags are, you have to go through it to experience it, to know what not to do, what to do. So an example is, okay, so like a contract. You get a contract put in front of you. Hey, sign this right now. I promise you, you'll make a grand a month or more doing just one photo shoot. So you're like, oh, thinking as a little girl, oh my gosh, this is so great. This now, have is you awesome. had people say that to you? No, I have okay. not. This okay. is just an example. Okay. And because to me that would be a lot. I mean, especially if someone who's in their early twenties. Well, so you get this paper and you're like, well, maybe I can just sign it and I'm gonna make all this money. It doesn't go like that. You really have to take a contract and put it in consideration. Like you're not just signing to say you're a model, you're signing so much more behind that. So definitely like my advice to a model is, like, read over your contracts, see what parties are involved, what you can, what you can't do. Like, really, like, do you want to be an exclusive model? Do you want to be non-exclusive? Or do you just want to be a freelance model? There's three di- three different options. Non-exclusive, meaning you're signed with an agency, like a mother agency, but you can work with others. Non-exclusive, no, exclusive means you're only signed to that one agency. You're theirs. You can't go anywhere. Now, freelance is where you're sitting in my position right now and you're working with photographers and makeup artists and everyone else and you don't need permission. You're free. You can do it on your own. You can make your own schedule. But you also have to have your manager in line. You have to have your schedule. You have to have this and that. It's like you own your small your own small business. So that is my biggest advice to give to these young ladies Pick which one you want to get into. Do you want to be exclusive, non-exclusive, or freelance? Do your research about how much money you can make. Do you make the most money doing freelancing? Or do you make the most money signing a piece of paper? Take everything into consideration and do your research. I cannot express that enough. Do your research. So what allowed you to understand what was best for you? Did you have a aha moment or did you have a lawyer friend or are you just blessed with, with great parents that helped you and they knew what to say? I what? am very blessed with my parents. I am so thankful, not even for my parents, but for all my aunts, my uncles, and my great friends and family that I have. They have all helped shape me into the person who I am today. But at the same time, yes, I came into sketchy situations and there are some things that didn't seem right, but I'm just, I'm a smart young lady. I know these things. If something doesn't seem right, I'm not going to go farther and invest in it. I'm going to say, no, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Or maybe this isn't the right place for me to be at. Maybe I shouldn't be with them. Always stick to your gut feeling. And that's always how I've been sticking to what I believe in and my beliefs and what I knew I wanted and what I didn't want. Do you seek out like minded, like, like people of like mind? Do you seek out people in your industry to get feedback on that clothing line, that photographer before you'll actually accept working with that project? Or is it all, are you always, do you have something personally that you, you know that you can trust that person you can tell? Yes. And no. I will always do my research on who I'm about to work with, who I'm about to get in front of the camera with. I'll do my research, but at the same time it comes down, is this going to benefit me in the long run? If it's not, I can't sit here. But if it will, 
maybe there's something that you and I can work on together and we can start building an empire. That's my biggest thing. How can you help me and how can I help you? That's how I look at working with these photographers, makeup artists, doing these designer shows, DC Fashion Week, LA, New York. How is it going to benefit not only you, but me? You know, the thing I'm I'm hearing and I don't hear that much is how how we, um, I, I appreciate that you have that attitude because, to be honest, your colleagues are more about what I can do. And it's a little And it's re- always it's really about I, 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 me, me, me. It's refreshing. I don't want to sit here and just brag about myself. I have so much success for being 21 years old, but I want to hear about yours as well. It doesn't always have to be about me, me, me. Maybe big things are about to happen to me this year. But at the same time, you can't always say I, 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 me, me, me. You have to open up and listen to others and be grateful for them. Well, it was going back to your saying that your philosophy is about being humble. But, you know, it's also just refreshing that, you know, you're willing to incorporate and, and the success you are without all the people that came up, came before you and you know you came into this world because your parents created you and god created you so you didn't just come out of nowhere so you know someone helped you is what is the is the end goal so i always find it i always find it annoying when someone says oh i'm a self-made no someone helped you like yeah you're always going to have mentors and coaches and and friends and family to help guide you in all sincerity you are in all sincerity, yes, you may have came up with an idea, but someone either lent you money or put you up so that you, you had somewhere to be safe so that you could be alive to come with that idea. Somehow, you know, someone helped you. So, For sure. So, you know, I just wanted to take one second from this great interview and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions. No matter if you're planning a wedding, a special event, or you just need an amazing headshot, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go just go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to the show and listen to this great interview. It's just nice. Um, unfortunately, I've been around a lot of people that have that mindset that believe that they have achieved everything themselves. And I know that I've helped them as much as, so I really um, will totally support you. Like if, if there's things Thank I can you. do to help you, um, I, I very much, very humble. I believe in that good Christian thing that um, if they're willing to accept your help and they want help, then you should give them help. So um, it, it's just humbling to, to hear that because you don't hear that. So I, all my listeners out there, she is definitely someone that you should invest your time, resources. So if you own a company, um, if you own a photography business, you own a videography business, you need to work with her, okay? so And you can find me on Instagram. It's C-A-S-S-I-D-Y, M as in Mary. Lacey, L-A-C-E-Y, and that is my Instagram handle. Yeah, and all of her information is going to be um, in the bylog at the end of the, the show, and she's going to have plenty of information. She's going to have plenty of time to, to blab all about her stuff, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so one of the reasons why I had you come in my studio and did some photos is you are a candidate for Miss Maryland USA. Congratulations. Thank you. And... um. I personally love if 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 I was going to rank them, USA would be number one, um, based on um, beauty, um, prestige, television television network. Um, I love the crown. I like the local crown a lot. I love the star crown. I don't know why they can't figure out what the national crown, but I mean that's okay. I still love the star crown. It would be cool if they had a modified star crown for. For, for nationals, but beggars can't be choosers. So we were talking about your pageant journey. Your pageant journey just started re- the last couple of months, right? 19 weeks ago. Okay. 
So how did you get introduced into the concept of doing a pageant? So were you in New York when this got floated to you or you just... I was in New York. So So how did this come about? I went to New York Fashion Week February of 2019, just this past year, and I'm sitting in my room. I was in New York for almost two weeks by myself. After my shows, I would go back to my room and I would really just unwind for the day. And I got finished all my shows and I was about to come back home the next few days because I was just hanging out in New York, having some fun, exploring the city, you know. And my good friend called me and she's like, hey, I just finished up my show. Let's go ahead and catch up. I said, all right, come up to my hotel. We'll go out for dinner or something. So she comes over and we're talking. She was like, yeah, I just got crowned, blah, 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 blah. Now, who's your friend? Brooke Packard. Okay. So she's from Northern Virginia and she's crowned in District of Columbia. I can't, I'm not going to say it because I don't know the correct way to say it, but she was like, yeah, I just got crowned, blah, blah, blah. Tell me all about her day. And I was so excited for her. And she just looks at me and she's like, wait, why did I just get crowned when you should be doing pageants? You should have been doing this a long time ago, Casty." I said, why do you say that? What are you talking about? I'm just on the inside, like cheesing from ear to ear because she told me I should have this crown. And next thing you know, I'm sitting there. I'm like, yeah, I should, I should do a pageant. I mean, to be honest, just based on what we were talking about, being humble and everything, mm-hmm. judges will eat you up like with butter. Because <laughs> seriously, because a lot of the times, they think that, I think, you know, I think the problem with a lot of girls that want success is they want to They won't it. hunt for it. And you have to be well, th- hungry to hunt. You have to really want it. You can't just expect money to be given to you or this to be given to you. If you want it, you have to put in the hard work. You have to stay focused. You have to put some things on pause just so you can really get your focus clear. And you have to put all your determination and everything you have, your whole heart, into what you truly want. I've wanted to be a top international model since I was seven years old. And people have helped me so much along along the way. It's time for me to give back to my community and help out and just show everyone. Well, to me, it sounds like, are are you ready to say you've checked that, you've accomplished that, that you're an international model? Yes, because this past, in New York, I did walk for two international designers, and I have very strong relations with those two people. So I'm very glad to check that off my list, but I'm ready to bump it up. I need a new goal, a new step. Okay. So that's what I was going to say. So you're ready for a new, a new goal, new, a new bucket list. Correct. So one of the things a lot of models do flip flop back and forth between uh, even actors flip flop back and forth between pageants because it's a good getting the opportunity to be on national television if you go to nationals. Um, Just looking at it from, like, a competition-wise, are you ready for that competition? I mean, what I was trying to say is I, as a, you know, as I've judged pageants, one of the things that I like to see is I like to see a girl who's not self-centered and full of it. A hundred percent. And and there's a huge thing, difference. And, and that's one of the things it's I like see from you. It's like cocky and confident. Right. And that's one of the things I see from you is you're very, you're very humble, but you're very confident. And you know, you know what, you know, you keep on talking about family, 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 and you're not giving like a lot of the girls that, that come off confident, but they, they're really not confident or they're really immature. They'll roll their eyes. They they have that facial feature, and you know for a fact that in in all sincerity, they're probably going to be a horrible title holder because they're probably going to treat people terribly, or they're they're not going to represent the state right. Or if they lose at at na- at nationals, they're not going to. You still fill have out, to be grateful, right? Like, they're not going to want to fill out their entire title, like just because your title um, was crowned in November and then nationals is in. Uh, September, uh, I mean, in December, you still have the rest of the year that you need, you know, and you need to have someone that's going to be there the entire year to represent your state. And that's why we need to find someone 
like yourself, because to be honest, that's what I'm getting the vibe is that like even if you lost at nationals, you would totally be like, yeah, I would, I'm so proud of my state. And that's I'd be the kind so of, proud. And that's that's the kind of person that I, when I'm a judge, that's the kind of person I'm looking for. I, I really don't care it's if you're like the this. most gorgeous girl in the world. You it's need to like be the this. most genuine person. If someone appeared backstage and they said, it was from your future, and they said, you're about to walk out on the stage, but you're not going to win. You're not going to win this title holder. Would you still compete? Why? Why wouldn't you? Why would you still do it? Well, yeah, because you never know until you try. You have to put your all into it. I've been training for this for 19 weeks since I got my packet in the mail, and it is a full-time job. I'm so grateful. I'm not only this pretty little model, but I'm a pediatric dental assistant. I love dentistry. Transforming someone's smile so that you can see that they're strong and confident as well makes me so happy and making sure my patients are healthy. But I'm grateful for having doctors and friends and support who I'm like, Hey, I really have to do this pageant thing coming up. Can I please go do it? I really need to go help out my community. I'm grateful to have those people in my life who let me do what I need to do. And that's awesome that you have that support both at home and at work because without that, you wouldn't be able to do this at all. Correct. So... Your, your friend is Miss DC. Um, Queen Beauty. Queen Beauty. Yep. She's in Queen. She's, so she's Miss DC Queen Beauty. Correct. Okay. And I I absolutely agree with her. Now, I'm sure your friend is gorgeous, but I agree with you. A crown will be coming to your head. If it, a, a lot of times it's hard to, to win the first year because unless you're really prepared. I know that you're working with some great people, but to be that savant and just win it, that's a very rare, rare company, but you know, I'm if so it, if grateful. It, if it doesn't happen this year, it, it will happen. I do have my coach. She's incredible. Her name is Carolyn Kemp. She won the title. No, I'm sorry. Carla Kemp. Carolyn's her mother. She's a sweetheart too. Say it over again. Hold on. Carolyn. No, no. Yeah. Go, go back to what you're saying and then I'll cut it in so you don't have to mess up. Okay. I'll make you look good. So my coach is Do it again. So I'm like So my coach, her name is Carla Kemp and she was the first woman to win the title holder Miss Teen USA for Maryland in 1983 and she has guided me and introduced me to so many great people and the trainings that I have coming up and my appearances and my giving back to the community, the events I have planned. If you said, Cassie, you have to be on that stage in two weeks, I would grab my rolling rack that has my evening gown and my swimsuit and my cocktail and my interview outfit and all my shoes perfectly sitting in my room just waiting for me to roll it out the door and take it to the hotel in Bethesda for this competition. I would say, yes, sir, I'm 100% ready. I'm ready to go eat and if you guys can't feel that how much emotional she is, like she's f- definitely almost crying in front of me, and she's <laughs> so like ready. Well, emotional. it's true because I have like, I everything see... set up in my room on a rolling rack, ready to go. Well, it just means you're prepared. I mean, um, and it sounds like if, like I said, if it's not this year, it's going to be next year. It you're ready. You're the the don't the like the only like that they always say the. The thing you can't prepare for are the things you un- you don't know. You know, the That's only thing. Sure. Right. So doing this competition, if you don't win this year, it will be all the stuff you don't know that you will know next year, and then you'll crush the competition. So, But even if you do win, you'll be even better at nationals. So it's a it's going to be a phenomenal situation for you. Thank you. I know it will be too. I just wanted to take one extra second and talk about our sponsor of the week. Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Production. No matter if you're planning a wedding and you need a wedding videographer, you're doing a music video, or you're doing commercial, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go right to their website at mavv 
SVP.com. Now let's get right back to this great interview. All right, so this is the part of the show where I let you take over and <laughs> I let yeah, and I let you basically run the show. So whatever you'd like to talk about, the floor is yours. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, I was bullied as a young girl. That was mainly throughout middle school and high school. During that time, like the most important years of your life, you think it is. You're like, oh my gosh, like seven year old me, I want to do be a model one day, but then you're getting bullied throughout school. And then you're like, you know what? I'm not going to let my haters stop me as we call it. So I am so grateful and thankful to be a part of so many great organizations, such as the dream queen association. We're a teen mentor group for young teens who need help in public schools, who don't have a family structure, or they just need help and advice and a hand to hold to get them through these things. Schooling is very difficult nowadays for these young, younger generations, such as bullying and their self-esteem, and they start going down that wrong road because they don't have the guidance or help that they need. My platform for Miss Maryland USA is to help these teens build their self-esteem and their confidence and to really focus on the bullying that's going forward. It's not even just in middle school and high school. I have a five-year-old niece and she's worried about the t-shirt she's going to wear twice in one week. It starts at such an early stage. And I have my first speaking event happening September 11th this year. I'll be going to a public school to share my platform and to be a guest panelist speaker for this high school just to kick off the school year to make sure these young teens are doing the correct thing. Always know that there's a goal. You have to to get to that goal, you have to have a plan. And to achieve that plan, you have to be on a schedule. It's like going to school. You have to go to bed, wake up, get dressed, go to school, come home, do your homework, and repeat it. You have to be on a schedule. So really talking to these teens and helping them find out what they want to do and build up their self-esteem and confidence. So that's one of the events I'll be working on. And and I, I will absolutely agree with you going to a public school and talking to someone when they need that emotional help is something that I wish more people would do and for you to do that and to realize that at such a young age 21 is such a young age to do that at another event that I'm in the works of doing of course I want to go to all the schools in Maryland not all of them because that's a little bit of exaggeration because there's so many in the state of Maryland but definitely just going out to the communities, going to these social events and county fairs and all that fun stuff where you're together as a community where you have all different ages of people and just come out and talk to them, get to know who they are and they can get to know who I am. But see, that's all the stuff you do as a title holder. So if you're ready, see, this is one of the things that I really find humble about you is that if you're already excited to do that, that's the whole job. Like some oh, girl, I know. girls don't get this. Like I, like I have been working with the privilege of working with two title holders day to day for two years. And a lot of the times they think that the job is photo shoots and like going to New York. No, no, no. The job is about going to that nursing home and like sitting there and reading a book with a child or just being there to, to to spend some time and to make them smile exactly and you already wanting to do that that I, I know you're prepared you just one of the things I just encourage you to do is to really express that to the judges that you're already ready because you're already doing what you need to do to be Miss Maryland that's correct and I know I am I one of my great friends told me this not too long ago I said, wow, I'm so stressed out. And they told me, why? Go to bed at nighttime. And if you're happy going to bed, knowing that you did everything you needed to do that day to prepare to win this title, there's nothing you should be stressed out about. Just go to bed, wake up tomorrow, and do the same thing over again the next day. 
and I'm definitely so excited. I'm in the works of going to my county fair, which is in St. Mary's County. That's a week. I think it's the third weekend of September is when our county fair is just to make an appearance and hand out my business cards and talk to people and really get my name out there to do so. This is where I wish with the the uh, American system does such a good job of marketing. They they give the the young girls a local title. I wish you had a local sash that you'd be like, yeah, I'm com- competing. I, it's the only thing that I wish that that America did that um USA that, that USA would do that America does so so well job. You get your sash once you arrive I know. at hotel for preparation, and I agree. Like I think. Everyone has their way of doing things, and so far in this journey that I'm on for Miss Maryland USA being an official state finalist, I'm very grateful for the things that have been brought to me, all my sponsorships, just everything that has led me up to only 11 weeks out. I'm very pleased and happy, and I cannot wait to see what after 11 weeks turns out to be with this system. Well, guys, if you can't, already tell she's going to win or she's going to do extremely well so that means she'll probably win the following year so i would highly suggest to join the bandwagon or train now before everyone else is knocking on her door and she doesn't have time to take um, a phone call because she's busy legitimately as i'm working on calendar events right now exactly (laughs) um i please um, reach out to her. She's going to give you all of her contact information. If you want to work with her or if you want to strategize with her or if you want to become a sponsor, she's, she, as of today, she literally has a shirt with all her sponsors on. Um, so she's definitely looking for more sponsors. And I've never heard a pageant girl talk about doing a pageant gift for all of her sponsors. That's a secret. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, this doesn't come out for like five weeks, so yeah. So, but um, I I just find her to be very humble. So, to, to finish out the show, tell them how to get in touch with you, and please donate, donate to her. So, one of my biggest platforms that I'm using is using Facebook. I have friends and family from all over the United States, and to find me on my Facebook, it's gonna say Cassidy Michelle, but the at username is. Cassidy's journey to Miss Maryland USA and Miss Maryland USA is in all caps. This is where I post all about the events that I'm doing, how I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing myself. I went out what day last Tuesday and I bought a huge whiteboard and I wrote road to Miss Maryland USA and I have goals for this week. So each week I put up a different goal and I post it on my a vision Facebook. board. You got a vision board, right? Correct. And then another platform I use is Instagram. Instagram, I have Instagram for my modeling. I'm changing it over like my profile, like the styling that I'm doing and posting. But you can find me at Cassidy M. Lacey. I post about all different types of things, but my main source I like using is my Facebook. And for anyone with questions or, hey, I want to work with you. Hey, can I have a chit chat with you? Can we do this and that? Please, please, please reach out to me. I am not super famous yet. I will be one day, but please message me, private message me. Don't just post on my public wall like, hey, this and that, like, Send me a message. We'll have a private conversation. Yeah, let, let's, for all the creeps out there, let's let's have some um, a thing of the quorum. And uh, just as an FYI for all the girls, okay, the, w- the best way to accomplish is to send a private email, be polite, and ask a civil conversation, and she will definitely and respond. And my email address is posted on the Facebook account. So just look it up. Send me a message. It's also on Instagram because that's how I take all my business routes. Like if you want to work with me, I'm like, hey, shoot me an email. It's a little bit more professional. So I prefer emails over DMs because sometimes they do get a little hectic and crazy. But I will accept it this time just for future. And all of the information to contact her will be in the about section of the podcast so either on youtube or on the podcast link guys so if if you didn't catch it earlier it's going to be right there so all you have to do is click on it so don't worry about misspelling her name or anything okay 
Well, thanks for being on the show. All right. Thank you so much, Paul, for having me on your show today. It was a pleasure, and I look forward to working with you in the future and to share my journey with you along the way because now you're a part of my journey. Well, I appreciate it very much, and I hope this is a journey of you actually winning. Oh, I will. I am very – you have to have confidence. I will win this title. It's not when I win or if I win. When I win this title. Well, that's usually what I say, so I apologize if I didn't say when you win. It's okay. Um, I – I do believe you have to believe that you're going to win before you win. So That's if you already correct. have that mindset, you have then, to picture it. You mm-hmm. have to picture it before it's really real. So congratulations on this journey. And I look forward to seeing you get crowned. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cassidy, thank you so much for coming on the show and just giving us an insight about being a professional model. It's always good to have someone that has so much young success and able to really provide that information for anyone else that wants to be a model in the future and is really concerned of not falling into any pitfalls or or any um, concerns or or trouble in the future. And we really do wish you the best. Um, As we said during the show, um, we find you to be extremely humble and um, someone who's definitely fit to be our Maryland queen. And we are rooting for you tremendously. So, We hope for you only the best. Don't forget this show drops every Thursday. So please subscribe both on iTunes and on YouTube. Please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down. Tell us what we're doing great or doing bad. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned.